first of all, I've had a good three days. Um, it's good to uh, have them all back and get going. I uh, got a number of players back from last year, uh, starters and their backups. And it's very good to see them all back on the field. Uh, the way I'll do this is uh, you'll, there'll be a theme and then you'll ask, so I'll go ahead and knock it out. I'm going to talk about each position. I won't mention the freshman, and then I'll talk about the entire freshman class at the end. Uh, start over on the offensive side of the ball, uh, up front. We got two guys back that's played a ton: Brett Treadway and Justin Brock. Uh, got a number of backups back with uh, Kevin Grief and Chase Woods and, Con and Connor Ward. All seen action last year. Uh, we picked up two. Transfers, Matt Oubre was here this spring. And then, uh, say his name, Cody Elans, I think is the way he pronounces it, left tackle. Both those guys were good pickups for us. Those two come back with uh, what we got coming back. Uh, have all come in shape and look, and look good. Tight end was a position that uh, we lost our starter, Peyton McVay, he played here a long time. And, his, and uh, the other guy that played a lot, Dylan Barrett, transferred. So we had kind of a... Uh, a transition there. We picked up uh, a kid from uh, northeastern Oklahoma. Jennings uh, has done a good job at tight end. Uh, Tate Smith is back, and those two are playing a lot. Uh, right now, uh, Brandon Beaton's uh, injured his foot prior to camp, and hopefully we'll have him back in a couple weeks. But we feel pretty good at the tight end position with all three of those guys. Wide receiver, uh, everyone's back except Mark Roberts. And having Brendan Langley transfer in this spring, and kind of the emergence, I should say, of uh, Martell Hawthorne after the freshman year last year, uh, we feel real good about that group. You know, you got a number of guys whose names uh, we've been calling out for a few years: Reggie Begleton, G. Gladney, Jay Nelson, Devin Brown. I'm probably missing one or two. But, you know, the, all those guys have played played well. Most of our running backs are back. Our top three are back. Uh, Cade Harrington, Carl Harris, Michael Handy are all back and doing well, looking good. Uh, now to the position everyone wants to talk about. It's a very unique situation not to have a quarterback back who was here. But that's in our top three, that's what we got. Uh, the two transfers, Joe Menden and Carson Earp, both were here this spring. What I can tell you uh, is they're uh, very intelligent, as intelligent as any quarterbacks I've ever coached. Uh, Joe's already got his uh, bachelor's working on his master's. Carson's in his third year of college and has not made a B yet. So they both pick up things extremely well. Uh, they're, bro they're both talented. And even though they have not uh, played for us, I feel very good that we, we got two good quarterbacks and, and they're going to battle it out and, and we're going to be in good shape there. And then, we have a freshman behind them. Uh, again, I wait on all the freshmen at the end. On the defensive side of the ball, we felt uh, very good about our three starters coming back up front, Omar Tebow in the middle and the, and the two New England kids, Cody Caroline and, and Corbin Carr. Uh, Josh Frost also uh, played some in the middle. Uh, he's going to be a senior and it's going to play well. We picked up two junior college transfers, Manasseh Miles from Trinity Valley and uh, Larry Carroll from Kilgore College. Uh, they both look very good early, and it looks now like we're going to have uh, six guys to play three spots, and we still, Lawrence Hale's been out of camp. He'll be in uh, hopefully today. He's had uh, a death in his family. Oh, no, I'm sorry, just the opposite, a marriage in his family. I've never had one miss for a marriage in his family, but, uh, but he'll, he'll come in today, so really we'll have seven that we feel pretty good about, uh, like I said, the two junior college guys. Combination of them uh, playing the position I played and it being so uh, important, I really watch them more than probably anything else. Feel very good about those guys. But I think we've really helped ourselves up front. Linebackers, Michael Hargis, Sean Jones, uh, Logan Moss, Eddie McGill, Ronnie Jones, all these guys are back uh, and they're kind of interchangeable. They'll, they'll play inside and out. Uh, and uh, that's, yeah, Reggie Long as well. Uh, we got a number of players back, uh, and, they, and they're all in shape, and they're all running around, flying around, doing things right. 
This secondary, we got our four starters back, and then Tommy Barrett and, and Trey Ridge and Michael Sheraton, three backups from last year back. So we got seven back, and we got a, a, a very good freshman class back there. And again, I'm holding off on them. Uh, but a lot of experience back there. And then in our kicking game, we've got our kicker and our punter and both of our snappers back. So uh, that's looking the way it needs to look. Now, our freshmen, I, I will answer individual questions about freshmen, but I will say this, uh, very excited about our freshman class. I think talent-wise, and the older classes don't want to hear this, I, I think it's as talented a class as we've ever signed. It's deep. Uh, we've signed five very good offensive linemen. We've signed two very good running backs. So we got a good quarterback, uh, one receiver. We didn't send, go out to as many receivers. We, we got depth in the secondary now with our freshman class is going to back them up just about every position. So well, I think what we got is a, a lot of returning players and a good young class to push them. And I, and I like the combination and the chemistry. Uh, and I like what I've seen so far in three days. Now. I'll open it up. When you look at the freshmen coming in, it's going to be like a two-fold question. You're, you're now seeing it's off early for two-fold questions, isn't it? But uh, you're seeing kids, you're recruiting now, where other schools have shown them a lot of interest. They're showing Lamar. They're choosing Lamar. And now early on in the process, you're getting verbal uh, commitment from kids who are still in high school. Does that say a lot for the progress of the program? I think it does. I, I, I think maybe a little bit what was holding us back some. Uh, we hadn't had a winning season, and uh, there's some people kind of sitting back wanting to wait to see us do that. And then uh, with me getting a new contract and being on the front end of a contract, uh, I think it's helped some too. But I think we hit it just right, and we hit it at a time where there was a very talented group of players out there, and we got our share of them. And, and, and I think we hit on some kids this year, I really do. What was the player's general reaction to being picked eight? The same as mine. Uh, okay, we still got a lot to prove. Uh, uh, I think uh, offensively, uh, they're looking at we got a number of returning players, but we don't have a quarterback back. Uh, I, I took it as uh, well. We, we need to go do it again and do more if we if we want to. Uh, move up preseason, but that's what's so great about this is that uh, you do it on the field and then our, our conference champions decided on the field and then the playoffs uh, decide our national champion. So I, I like the way we do both. So it's there for us and it's when it came out I knew that our players would, would not like where we were picked and that at the right time I could use it and it, you know, I'll use it when I have to. We'll use whatever we can. That's definitely something I can use. Coach, uh, you spoke on the quarterbacks a little bit. What is the earliest you think you could make you would make a decision, or are you planning on having a two quarterback system once the season starts? If I had to give you that answer today, uh, it would probably be Sam Houston before we try to narrow it down, uh, just because we don't have uh, scrimmages against other people. Uh, I don't think we can afford to redshirt either one of them, so we might as well let both of them play. Uh, so I see us. Uh, going through camp with them splitting time and then them splitting time against Pecone and Baylor. Coach, if the season started today, which quarterback would be the number one? I'm glad the season doesn't start today. I I'll say this, uh, I don't think either one of them at this point has distanced himself from the other one. Uh, I think they both, uh, if you just watch them series in, series out, want to be over 1-1 one, one series back and forth, and they both are doing a very good job. And then be honest with you, I'm not just trying to duck the question. Uh, I'm happy with both of them. I, I, like, I like their progress they've made from the spring. And, uh, but right now, they have, neither one of them has distanced themselves from the other. Coach, I'm going to talk to you last week. You talked about this team had sort of a calm energy that you hadn't seen before. Can you just expand on what you believe exactly you're talking about? Well, I, I think we just got a number of players back that's played in this league a while, and they and they know what they have to do, uh, and there's not a lot of uh, unknowns out there, even though we talk about the quarterback. But uh, there's just a number of players and coaches back with that have been through this together, and uh, we know what we have to do, and we know that just talking about it's not going to get it done. We have to work. These players have worked extremely hard. They're in great shape, uh, and their attitude's good, and it, it makes – 
uh, we've gotten past some things and that we can, as coaches, can really spend our time teaching because uh, uh, our players have been in our program a while, our program has been around a while, and they, and they know what they have to do. Looking at your schedule, I mean, the, the front part of that schedule, uh, you know, when you start at Baylor, it's pretty brutal because in back-to-back-to-back -back -back weeks, you know, at Baylor, at Sam, at Southeastern Louisiana, matter of fact, the Sam and Southeastern Louisiana are not going to have much to turn around because that game's on a Thursday. How tough is it to get ready for, you know, with the front end of the schedule sometimes? I'm just thinking what great shape we'll be in if we lose Ham and 2-0 and at conference. You know, uh, you know, so it's there for us. I, like you said, uh, you know, and they'll come back. Well, we got them both at home next year. That doesn't help us a whole lot this year. But uh, you got to play them sometime. Uh, it's there for us. It's, it's going to be a challenge, and there's no way of uh, saying they're not the teams to beat. That's the two to beat. Uh, they're, left, they're ranked at the top uh, for a reason, and, and I think deservedly so. But uh, it's there for us. You should have a strong offensive line. That your receiving core could possibly be the best in the conference. How important is that to make this transition into a, you know uh, an offense that's going to have a new quarterback this year? Well, I think if you're going to go with a new quarterback, it helps if you've got an experienced line and maybe give him you know a little extra time and a receiving core that's been there together. So I think that part of it's good. Uh, it's never a good time to have brand new quarterbacks, but if you're going to have them. Uh, I think this is a good – and, and running backs are back as well. So he's got a lot of guys around this play together. Were you surprised that the two quarterbacks left last year? Or did you know that might happen? I think I was more disappointed than I was surprised. Uh, and, and I addressed that with the team. Uh, I don't think any player or fan or coach or anybody uh, wants us to not build the best team we can. And if we have an opportunity to, to get a good player, it doesn't matter the position, we're going to do it. And it just so happened that uh, these two young men were available, and I thought that they would both uh, benefit us. And now I'm glad we did, but I was a little disappointed in that. Expanding off the offense a little bit, Langston obviously adjusting to his new role. What can fans see that's going to be different, I guess, with his offense than under Coach Keck? Uh, I, I don't know if uh, you'll see a lot difference as far as formations and plays. I think Chuck, uh, because I know I sat in the meetings, would like to run the ball more. Uh, that doesn't mean that we're going to in that if it's not there, Chuck's not going to just run into a wall. But if, if he has his brothers and he can, he'd like to run the ball a little bit more. But I, I don't think you'll see too much of a change, uh, but just mainly due to the fact that so many of the players back, and we're going to keep the same scheme. Speaking of uh, Coach Langston, you know, you know, some, the past few years on the sideline, fired up, big motivator, that type of personality. Is it going to be down there as the offensive coordinator? Or is he going to be up in the booth? Well, we'll see. Right now, he's he's planning on going up, uh, but I told him I, I thought he either needed to go up or have somebody up that he could really rely on. I've done it both ways as a defensive coordinator. I've actually called on the field more than I've been up, but when I finally was forced to go up, I wouldn't have done it. Uh, I was a better coordinator. Uh, so uh, I think he'll start out up.